This column between our kitchen and living room has become a magnet for catching all our crap when we come into our house, but we don't have a great alternative to get rid of this eyesore. So today, we're going to fix that. So one of the first things I need to do is pick out a piece of scrap wood because the Builder's Challenge Season 15 requires me to use a piece of scrap wood as a feature in the item. I'll tell you all about the Builder's Challenge in just a minute, but let's go ahead and pick this piece of scrap wood so I can get to work because I am under a little bit of time pressure. So I have a piece of ambrosia maple that um, I use to make some uh, picture frame for Lauren a few months back. Actually, it was for this last Christmas. Um, and they turned out beautiful. I'll uh, show some clips of them right here now. But um, I've had this off cut from it for a while now. And I say off cut, I mean, it's kind of a long piece, but it's uh, I haven't known what to do with it because it's so torn up. Um, so really, I mean, this is kind of scrap, but I didn't want to throw it away because that's such a beautiful board and it's got all that coloring from the ambrosia beetles. Um, so I think this is gonna be the perfect project for this though. All right, so about that builder's challenge. The builder's challenge is an online competition hosted a couple times a year for woodworkers. While there are prizes to be won, it's just really a cool event to participate in and observe because of all the unique ideas that you see other woodworkers come up with. It's just really inspiring and a great idea generation for future projects. But with each season, there's a different theme. Sometimes it's a specific piece, other times it's using certain materials. But season 15 was the first time that the theme was simply to feature an offcut in your build. I kind of thought that this project was perfect for that in that I was basically planning on using an offcut for this. Um, the only problem was with it being between uh, me being out of town for work and then vacation at the end of July. I only had six days out of the three weeks allotted to complete the project. So with that, let me get back to this build. So as you saw, I cut down the board to the length that I needed, which in this case was 35 inches long. And then I trued up all the sides. And now I am just planing it down to make sure that it sits flat for when it gets mounted to a wall. We plan on mounting this in our bedroom, which kind of has a Southwest theme to it. So we really wanted to give this piece um, a Southwest feel. So we decided we wanted to give it a pop of color by adding some Talavera tiles that would be recessed into the wood. So right here, I'm basically laying out what the pattern would be with those tiles and then cutting all the notches um, to recess those pieces into the wood. I used a trim router with a straight bit to hog out most of the material for these inlays. I did do this free handed and I would highly recommend not doing that if you have the time. The only reason I did it free handed was because I was short on time and setting up the guides for each one of these was going to be tedious. Um, so I did be, I was trying to be as careful as I could to stay away from the edge and then just use a chisel to finish it all up. Uh, just in case that router bit wanted to catch and rip into the rest of the wood though, um, it would be devastating. Once I had every recess cleaned up, I rough fit a tile specifically assigned to each spot and made sure they had a good fit. These tiles are by no means uniform and each one might have a slightly different edge to them. So I would sand down the sides uh, for each tile using 320 grit sandpaper until it had a tight fit in its assigned location. So I was routing this chamfer all along the edge of this and I forgot about the wood uh, 
rot that was in this. And so whenever I got here, the uh, guide on the side of my router bit fouled back in there. And so now I got this weird little mark. So um, what I am gonna do actually is cut off about a half inch or so, whatever that is from both sides to make it even out. And then I need to remember to put a uh, guide on this side so that my router doesn't uh, get up in this crevice um, the second go round. So always something. Rather than trying to measure everything out to set up this guide, what I did is I just made a chamfer at the ends of the side of the board. And then I had a place that I could just push the router right up against, know exactly where the, uh, the flat base plate needs to run. And I could clamp my guide down there and don't need to measure. I sanded the whole thing down using 150 grit sandpaper and I tried to be careful with this. Um, those nice sharp edges for all the chamfers can easily get rounded over if you push too hard when you're sanding this. So uh, just go nice and slow and let the tool do the work. All right, so I did three coats of Danish oil and this is looking really good, but now it is time to do a coat of fishing paste wax. Um, so I'm just gonna buff that in, uh, let it sit for a little while, about 15 minutes, and then buff it out. Um, and this should be good to go to mount hardware on. I installed all the Talavera tiles in their assigned locations using two-part epoxy, just putting a little bit on the back and smearing it around, and then I lightly tapped them in place to make sure they were set well. Um, but you got to be careful with this tapping because they are ceramic, so they're very brittle, and if you tap too hard, you might actually crack them. Trust me, I know. Oh no. I used a 30 inch long French cleat which has a load rating of 300 pounds. I will never use that full rating. Um, I will maybe only at best use 50 pounds but I really wanted that 30 inches long so that if I do hang a heavy backpack on one side it's well supported and doesn't want to move around on the wall. So our main objective was to create a new location to hang our bags and whatever else was collecting on that column in the kitchen and to make that column look less cluttered. Check and check. I also had a goal to get this project done in less than six days so that I could enter it into season 15 of the Builders Challenge. Check there also. I was able to get it successfully built and installed in less than four days. This was a pretty low cost build and pretty simple to easily make a statement on your wall. In total, all the materials cost me less than $60 and if you want to see that breakdown, you can check out the description below. If you enjoyed this video, check out the next one that I have queued up for you right here and until next time, take a chance and build something. Seriously? Uh, where are my clients?